In this video, I'm pleased to announce the release of version 1.20 for the Roland Phantom G series workstations. It adds a number of new features, plus there's a number of new system enhancements as well. Some of those being support for up to 1 gigabyte RAM memory now, support for larger USB flash drives and more commercially available USB flash drives. So let's check out version 1.20. Now one of the most significant additions to version 1.20 is support for one gigabyte RAM. And then the other thing that's been enhanced also is support for larger size USB flash drives. Something else that's been enhanced is the import. So clicking on import, we now have a mark and a mark all function. So if we want to now mark individual samples within our import folder for importing, we can now do that. And then F8 to import. And then notice where the sample is now. And that function has also been added to the Phantom G's sample list. In single play mode, by default, the pad mode now boots up with the pad mode setting to rhythm part. We've now added MSB and LSB number references to all the patch names. When in pro edit mode, or access multiple parameters, the relative values are kept for the settings. The mouse now engages with the tempo adjustment in the display. So there's a numerics function that's been engaged also within every drop down menu. So if numeric is chosen, and we can select a choice on the pads, press hold to confirm the choice, and then F8 select. The mouse controls all fader adjustments within, this, within the display, in addition to all the real-time control knob parameters, and switches as well. In live mode, there's been a new view added to the mixer mode. When clicking F6, F6 will show the second half of the channel strip. Clicking again will bring up a brand new display that shows the individual control change parameters for that part and its corresponding knob settings. In the sample list, when clicking on the sample list itself and clicking on the search function, the search function can be used now within the sample list to locate samples. Within the phrase list, the search function has also been engaged to work in the phrase list. Now when the Phantom G boots up, the track view has been changed. So the default track view is a 24 track view with the first 16 tracks being MIDI tracks. The mouse engages with all the elements now within the display. So the scroll bottom scroll bar is engaged. The performance of the right scroll bar has been improved. If you click on jump, that'll open the jump menu. Loop opens the loop menu. Tempo, the tempo menu, and the tempo can be adjusted with the mouse within the display. It's a much more simple, easy to read view, and all the columns now engage with the mouse as you click down them. So if we click on track name, Right click, you automatically get to the track naming field, output assignment, and mute as well. You're able now to access different mute groups within the song recorder. So if we go to pad mode and press track mute, you'll notice that the track list, the mutes highlight now. And of course, we can press the numeric key or the pads and mute different tracks. If we now want to access, let's say, tracks 17 through 25 with our mutes, we can now do that. All we simply do is press the roll button. In this case, I'll press pad number two. And now, tracks 17 through 25 can now be muted from the pads. And we can continue that on all the way through the end of our track list. So I can now access all the way down to, down to tracks 152. 
In studio mode, the keyboard switch is now set to off by default in the external mixer. If I click on F6 a third time, I get the display that shows me my controller data specific for that part. And again, I can take and I can change that part as I work in real time. You notice I can actually access different studio sets if I want. Let's look at new features that have been added to the Song Utility menu. If we click F7, at the very bottom of the menu is a new save function for saving as standard MIDI files. We click on F8 and you can select which part group you would like to save. And you can choose from internal, the two ARX boards, or external data, and then which type of standard MIDI file format you'd like to choose. And so to save a song as, let's say, Format 1. In the case of my song, I'll choose Internal Format 1, Execute, I can name the song, and then Save as Standard MIDI Files. And then if I go to F2, my Standard MIDI File list, there's my song saved in the list. And I can also preview it here. <laughs> utility are three new options, insert, delete, and copy. And this is for phrase management within your song. So for instance, if I want to copy a range of phrases that are, let's say, the same length, I can take and choose my source range and then my destination. So in this case, I'm going to extend the length of my song. I'll choose destination measure 5, and then copy times 4. And then notice for the source, I can choose all, which is all MIDI tracks and all audio tracks. Or I can choose just individual MIDI tracks, individual audio tracks, or my tempo track. And then F8 execute. And there you see the phrases have been copied. If I want to take an insert time within a song, I can go back to F7, Go to Insert. Let's say I want to insert four bars from measures five through nine. So go to Measure, park it there, four measures. You can choose the time signature and execute. And then again, if I wish to remove time within a song, same thing, Song Utility, Delete. And let's say I just want to delete two bars from this passage. Go to my Source Measure. The amount, say two measures, and execute. What AutoTrack does is it automatically selects the record track for you, and then it also automatically names the track. And it does it by part groups. So for instance, when we select the new part select screen, if I select an internal part, part 1 through 16, those recordings will default automatically to the first 16 tracks. And then if I click on Record, the Phantom G automatically selects Track 10. And so if I sequence, after I finish recording, the Phantom G will name the track. And click OK. And then notice, my patch name is automatically filled in for me. AutoTrack will also select the first audio track for you, and then the subsequent tracks as they become available. And then when you press stop, the sample name is automatically input for you.